Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang this evening here. Uh, so, uh, Satsang was a quite a spontaneous thing today, as I uh, prefer actually. But uh, so, um, uh, a chance to get everyone together and to, to listen to you also. Mm, I think I talk enough. You, please come. Namaste. Namaste, madam. Thank you. I need to check in with you something that is coming up in my experience, and I feel it's preventing me to merge more deeply into emptiness. And it's still alive like this last few days. I recognize emptiness and I have a feeling that it's taking more space, if I can say. But as soon as it looks to be more true and real, something pulls me out of it and I get caught. And I try to inquire and check in. How does emptiness look more real and more true? <coughs> emptiness. How does emptiness look more real and more true than the previous emptiness? In my recognition. Ah. Yeah, I know it's not the truth, <coughs> it's okay. but it's my experience. Yeah. Okay. So what you're actually saying is that. <coughs> The more, the more of your uh, delusions that fall away, then it becomes very clear that um, that yourself we may call emptiness for now. No, and they are they are one and the same. Just like mm-hmm. that. Okay, carry on. Mm. Um, there is a fear. Um It's hard to use word because I I can observe what I'm seeing, but it's I still need to expose that even mm. if it's not. Um, there is a fear and of of conditioning that to, to lose myself myself as the person fully into emptiness. And that catch me all the time. I'm pulling back into personhood, and I can see that's not the way to. Mm. It's not gonna work out like that. Mm. And I'm just give you an example. It's the first time I saw you, and you gave me a hug. Everything just emptied out, and I was only this. And I got scared because I didn't know what it was. And with thoughts, I w- everything fell away. In the falling away, there was no fear. There was. Sorry. There was no fear in the actual. They say everything fell away. Yeah, there was no fear. Yes. Yeah. Then fear come. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm not sure. I I want to understand and wash this away. In the falling away, there was no fear. There was also no you, personally. I didn't get that. Can you repeat? In the falling away, when you said everything fell away when I hugged you, and you said I said there was no fear. No fear was there, no. Mm-hmm. And uh, no person was there also. No. Mm. So, and the fear and the person came back together somehow. Mm-hmm. And it that which observed yeah. the person and the fear coming back, did that come back? That which observed the person coming back and the fear coming back, 
yeah, the observer of them, mm-hmm. did that go away? The capacity to observe them? No, no. no. Because I was aware of what the that the person and the yeah. speak. Which is that. greater, the person or you, the observer of the person? We can slow down, it's okay. Mm-hmm. What is greater, the person coming back and weakness to come back? Hmm? Did the weakness of the person coming back suffer the person coming back? Take your time. And the rest of you also, you follow through with your own seeing to see if you can confirm what is being said. You see, you said the person in the moment of you said you received a hug, and in that moment uh, everything fell away. He was empty. No, was it a, a beautiful moment? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Why was it beautiful? Because there was just this and nothing left. And yeah. And there was nothing personal also. Yeah. <laughs> then the person came back. The person came back. Um, how? What is the person that come back? It was a thought. A th- I remember, thought, like yeah. there is al- always a thought. Maybe that's not it, and it's there is a danger to go here. Ah. So I hold on a sense. You of are to expect that. You are to expect that, and you see somehow that uh, the mind is making a case for itself. It's not going to just lie down and just give up all these habits for so long, you know. Somehow, in the presence of grace or something, the person's sense uh, uh, vanished uh, temporarily. You may say no, and you were in your natural state. Well, can I use a word like that? That you were in your natural state, and then uh, a thought come like cannot be so easy or something. What was the thought that came? No, the thought was um, it, it happened again this morning, and it's the same. It's hmm. maybe that's not it, and yes, something is scared. Yeah. You have to expect this kind of thought. Maybe it's not it. The mind play, and the mind's role is to create doubt in front of you, okay? So that what happened? You will go, oh, it's not it, or that you look and go, that's that's, you know, does that contribute anything to you? This doubt that come, the thought that come, maybe that's not it. Why is this thought so appealing for you? Uh, I just need to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I used to do meditation, and I had a few teachers who told me in meditation that I was coming out of my body, and it was something that I should not do, Mm. but I was not aware of doing it. Mm. It's not relevant. Um, today, but the fear is coming up that I'm going to die and go into some bad energy. Mm. In, he's, I think the, I can see that the thought is coming out to that. And I get caught because I still there is a seed of believing it, yes. that it's a danger and to, to, to go there. To go where? Out of your body? <laughs> Or simply not to be attached to your body. What is the danger? You see, is it really to, to kind of out of body, no, or simply I am that much more than the body? Yeah, and I can feel it now. In yes, the... why didn't you use that discernment when the thought come? Why you don't use that discernment which you are expressing now? Why you didn't use it when that thought come? Maybe this is not it. Uh, maybe what is not it? That I feel so wonderful. I feel so naturally, effortlessly myself. Maybe that's not it. Why should it not be it? Yeah, there is still 
when you ask me that, I can see there is still a belief <coughs> into a past self-image. Yeah, that is yeah. also perceived. No? Yeah. If, if there is a belief in you know an old kind of habit, you know, that that is something uh, perceived. I mean that you 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 are aware of it. Yeah, I'm aware of it. And when you are aware of something, it means that it cannot uh, just uh, surprise you so much. You, you you're aware of this uh, that this oh, in the moment what happened, just the thought came. Maybe this is not it, or this can't be it, and that thought was not. Um, you did not discern that thought. You didn't look into it. Simply like a reflex to the thought, mm-hmm. it's as though something got pulled back into identity. Hmm? Even the sense of being pulled back into identity. Was that they are not the capacity to observe that as a sensation also? Yes. I I can see that it keeps repeating because it happened this morning again, and by the intensity of it, I something. It yeah, keeps not... repeating for you to transcend it. Mm-hmm. Not for you to feel that oh I keep failing, but I keep failing. And this one, even you know, I want to put a little few words about this one who keep oh I lost it and oh I failed it, you know. Uh, this voice, this voice that say, you know, ah, oh, you know, and then the mind came and then whoa, I just got pulled out again into into the noise of the mind. And this one who gets pulled about, out and about, is that really you, or is it just your? Um, your regular idea about yourself. Can I speak like that, or is it too early to talk like that? No, it's good. Okay, that thing that got pulled out. You know, wasn't there a, there wasn't there an awareness of even the sense of being distracted or being pulled out? Yes. Yeah. You see, this is where you need to do your work. You let him go. You let this thought get away with it. You believed in it. And so what happened that the sense a sense comes that you were back again in identity. That did not happen to consciousness. That did not happen to pure consciousness. It happened to a relationship of consciousness with its identity as a person. That play keeps going on. This is seen also I yeah. Mm. I've been checking this last few days, I can see that yeah. the thing and the relation, the link to it. Mm. The one who sees it, how involved is the one who sees this? Unavoidably involved? I'm talking to all of you by the way. Unav- unavoidably involved in that? Or, or having the, the the capacity to observe that, to discern that, and to discard following that vibration or that noise. This is where the work is. Not you cannot win a fight when it's finished. When the thing is going on, you must be very present with with that. You see, you as who. Your intelligent capacity to, to, to observe, the power that you have to observe and to discern that actually, you know, this is an old story. It's an old story. And you know what? It's a ghost story. Okay? Because the one the story is about, can you even find it even? I know some people will not understand what I speak just now. But most of you should. It is an old recurring story, but what happened to me? Mm. This is what I call the player in the, in the theatre of consciousness. The theatre of consciousness means what? Everything that you experience almost in, your, in our waking state life. Because our life, if I can just point out, is primarily the remembering of the activities of the waking state. You don't include in your life your 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 deep sleep. That takes up a good eight hours. 
but we don't include those eight hours as you know in your report about your history. It's primarily what how the behavior of your body mind and being during the waking state, which is about what fourteen hours or whatever like this. And for most of the time, when we wake up, when you wake up, if you get up at six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning, and you go to bed at ten o'clock in the night, between those hours, uh, how much of your attention is caught into personhood? What the person want, what the person think, what the person believe, what the person is practicing, the person's spirituality, even. It's an old habit that happens for. Some say many, many lifetimes even. No? Mm. I'm not blaming. We're all in the same pot to an extent. No? But here you have learned something, at least in this life and at this time of your life, you've learned something that there's a capacity to observe these things, actually. No? That in fact the life that is being lived as this unfolding. Uh, Unfolds within something that itself is not unfolding. The something that's not unfolding is the the basic consciousness. Everyone kind of knows this, but don't know it. Like we know it, but not aware of it. Actually, it's only when it's brought to our attention, and you can begin to actually grasp that, that it becomes really auspicious. You know. Otherwise, we are locked somehow, almost like prisoners of our own thinking, of our own mind. And it's not that everything in the mind is bad. I mean, the mind is everything. I'm only speaking about that aspect of the mind which is linked to your identity personally, because it's through that that all the other nonsense is coming. Also, it's not a stable state. You know it also. And yet, because of perhaps habit, I don't know if it's just habit or attachment to personal identity prolongs and perpetuates that state. You know. Okay, where you are today? Tell me now. You've talked about something in the past now. Mm-hmm. Say something about the present. I feel like space and silence inside, and uh, peace. Are they merely feelings that uh, come and go? Because you are aware of them also. Mm -hmm. These are good, good vibrations. You know, peace and stillness, joy. These are good things, but there is an awareness of them, meaning that they may also pass, and new feelings may come, isn't it? <clears throat> so I am not going to say that these feelings and awareness are the same thing. Okay? Yeah. At least for a while, while the sense of your identity as a person still persists. Because it will be the person who is thinking that they are experiencing peace and joy, and, and because the person is not consistent, the joy and the peace will not be consistent. When the person gives way to pure presence, the joy and the peace will be consistent. Does anybody get that? The person is not a reliable or consistent or dependable state. It is a state of being. We are much more than the person. There are many, many people in the world that would be surprised to hear that, because much of our efforts is to become just a better person. We think that's the fact of who we are. Something person. Person means personal, meaning that you're you're living life personally. But we have within us the capacity that's much broader and can include the personal, 
but it's much broader than the personal. That's where I'm speaking from. And that's what I'm searching to pull out from you. But there is a loyalty to personal identity at the same time. You have heard this all before, don't you? Okay, do I need to say it again? Thank you. Why do I need to say it again? Why? Because we learn things through habit, over and over and over and over again, and repetition. And it's the same way through habit and repetition that we come back to ourselves. And this is why some people keep saying the same thing. If you look at some of these books, look, Ribu Gita, the Avaduta Gita, Ashtavakra Gita, all these things. If you read them, let me tell you something. I pick one in one of these books here. There are some lovely books, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful books. Any of these. This book, okay, look how many pages, so many things he's saying. Okay? You know what he's saying? The same thing I'm saying to you, but actually it's repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. Why? One time, uh, when early, many years ago, when we were attempting to make first book, I think you remember this one, uh, as one, one lady decided she wanted she would help to, um, to transcribe, to write down some of my talks. But she gave up after a time because says he keeps saying the same thing over and over again. You know who I'm talking about. Keeps saying the same thing over and over again. The mind doesn't want to hear it. Give me something new. Give me something new. Okay? In here it's saying the same thing over and over and over again. Until one day the mind drops from holding this belief, this belief that we're holding that seems to contradict or counteract or resist the simplicity, because this work is a whoa. But yet it's very simple. It's the most simple, actually. But to the mind it's the more oh, it's too much, too much. Why? No, as I said before, the truth is simple, but the seeker of truth is complex and is mostly wrestling with its own complexity. Because the egoic nature is what it's the carnal nature of ego is directly resistant to truth. If I say to you, speak only about now, because your life is now, isn't it? Okay, speak about now. Tell me something about now. Yesterday, you can tell me volumes about yesterday. Last week, many volumes. Tell me something about now. Because tomorrow you're going to tell me about today and now. Tell me today, tell me now about now. Cat got your tongue? There is no question now. <laughs> I'm just present. Let me ask you a question, all of you. Is there ever really a question now? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Isn't that relevant somehow? That if you, what we mean by now, because it seems our lives are about past and future. They're telling you, yeah, there's so many things you talk, 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 talk. What are you talking about? Now? Not at all. Talk about yesterday, last week, somebody who is not here.
What about someone who's right here? Talk to them about them right now. The mind feeds on past and future. Why? Because uh, while you are preoccupied with past, which is memory, and future, which is projection, you are not even you are not embodying your own self. You are in your mind. What about now? What is now? Tell me the history of now. But we are not interested in now. We are interested in when and then, but not now. What is now? Is it significant? Or we have to wait until it gets a bit stale and becomes yesterday. And oh, yesterday I was talking with Muji. Oh, yeah. But when now you are here, what does your mind have to say about now? Everything is in synchronicity now. Mind has nothing to say about now, because he cannot. I don't know. Okay, mind has nothing to say about now. Thank you. Boom. What's left? <laughs> what do you have to say? Is mind and you same thing? No. You sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I feel joy by saying that. <laughs> You see what? I feel joy by saying no, because I know the difference and it feels, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yes. Mind is like the wind. Yourself is like space. The wind moves about, but it needs space to move about. But space does not move about. Space can exist without the wind, but the wind cannot exist without space. The wind mind is blowing about. Hmm. Space, which is synonymous with consciousness, consciousness does not move about. Mind seems to move about. Do we need to have a fight with the mind? Mind will be there, it will play. It will play for as long as you are interested in seeing it. The greatest transcendence of the mind activity in, in its personal expression, the greatest uh, transcendence is when the mind stuff becomes insignificant for you, meaning you lose interest in all, this, all the blah, 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 blah. Something just, uh, I've seen it, I've heard it. It's nothing new, does not contribute to your happiness, to your peace. And something just enough of that. Not even with attitude. I think it's enough for the moment. Yes, thank good. you so good, much. Good, good. Oh, I just okay. want to say I love you and I love all of you and thank you to let me being such a beautiful place. <laughs> Very good. 
uh, you come. You, you come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for um, calling me again. Mm-hmm. So soon, I was like, maybe I shouldn't put my hand up, but. I have no time to waste. I have to go back a bit in time, but it will, but it is here. Okay. If you let me do it. Before coming here last year, I was um, sitting down in the theater. The lights went off and somehow there was this thing that there's only ever this. There's nothing else, just this. This meaning? Where everything is happening. I don't know how to say it, and mm. so I... So I started... It was mind-blowing. It's. I can't say it. And so I started checking this thing. Like I started going back to when I was a little girl and important experiences that I had in my life. And and they all happened in this. There was only ever this. And um, so every time I remember to check in, it's only ever this. There's actually there's no time and space. But how do I know this is me? Well, me being what? How do I know this is me? What is your reference for me? How do I know this is me? You know this is. No? You say, I know this is. There is only this. There is only this. Then where is the me then? The me must be included in this. Including everything else, while there is the energy to perceive elseness. In fact, what you are speaking, you know, is actually the quintessence of even some of the highest scriptures. Actually, in India, it is said, "All is Brahman." Brahman means absolute. Pure consciousness. If you grasp this, you are free. You have no trouble in life. Even when trouble come, it's not trouble. Because you will know I am this, and you will not know it as an intellectual conviction. I don't know how much more to explain that. So I'm taking your words as though in the way that I hear them. There is only this. Then your second statement is not so thing, but it's okay. You say, How do I know I am this? Where did you come from? <laughs> There's only this. What is what is able to confirm there's only this? Only this. You are probably not used to this language. Some people are here, maybe for first, second time. You may be not used to this language. It may sound like, you know, whoa, what is all that I talk about? Don't, don't worry. If you don't understand what I am speaking, and you are here, trust. God brought you here. Even if you don't understand my words, there are other ways in which being here is going to be very good. 
is only this. That's why I ask you, this meaning what? You could not explain. Nobody can explain what is this. Don't give it to your mind. Mind will start to make up some story, some thesis about it. No. But I am accepting your words in a very childlike way. There is only this. And I am taking the words like that is experience. That is a recognition, that is a revelation, that is something that is only this. Yeah. Maybe there is this, this only this. Maybe it didn't come in words. Even then, something comes as, "How do I know I am this? If there's only this, who is asking this question then? Because there is also alongside, there is the sense of your dynamic life and existence as a person in this body that feels that feels contrary to that there is only this. I, I somehow can't seem to reconcile this only this mm -hmm. with my se self. Yes. Which I don't know. <laughs> because also what's been going on of course that yes. I'm I'm losing reference about who I am because yes. <laughs> that, that is good. I don't in know my I, view. No? My uh, my view it's it's yes. even better. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Yeah. I can't, but somehow I feel maybe it needs time. I don't know, but um, how do I know that I am this? How do I know that I am this? How do I know that I am? Let's, let's leave this for a moment. How do I know that I am? Who taught you that you are? What is your name again? Uh, Josie. Josie. Who told you? Somebody told you you're Josie. Did they tell you that you are? No. No. They told what you are that you are Josie. Yeah, they yeah. told me. Yeah. What you are believed I am Josie. But what you are is not Josie. Yeah, and actually I can't remember since I'm not. I also check that all the time. Like Say again? I can't remember since when I'm not like Yeah. There's no like I began to be. Yes. You know, and there's no so these things I've checked and yeah. there's no beginning. Yeah. Mm. It, um, to to Josie or yourself? No, to 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 um to being to, to like being. to oh, be. Yes, I, yes, yes, yes. There's no beginning of my being. Yes. You can't find it. It's um, yeah. That's why it's it is like there's no time and space because, of course, my everyday life. Is also lived in personhood, but every time I check in, there's like no time, no space. <laughs> there's only <laughs> this. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and again, what is it that's knowing there's only this? What is saying there's only this? What is confirming there's only this? Well, it's. What has the authority to state there's only this? Yeah, I know it with my mind, but um, yeah. and yeah, but um, it's yeah. for now. It's not an experience. Okay. Um, is it? Can I ask? Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's something is so sure. 
that I've always known this and this experience will come to me. I don't know, it's like so, it's an evidence. Like maybe the two are not, the two. The so maybe I don't experience it yet, but but I will, which is also crazy because, <laughs> anyway, there's some... As long as something keeps a separate sense of you to want to experience oh. this, that thirst and that desire will persist in you, because it, uh, it supports the sense of separateness. Please, can you repeat? I don't know. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so I, mm. yeah, so I don't want... As long as there's something inside you, uh -huh. uh, something appears to split, where yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a, a knower and something known. Yeah. It's almost like, <clears throat> you say, I've always known this. Yeah. So this becomes like a knowledge. Uh -huh. But the knowledge and being are one. In this ultimate knowledge, there is not one thing knowing another. This is why I say it's a non-phenomenal recognition, meaning that it's not the recognition of an object, it's like the recognition of the subject. But, this but is by who? Yeah, by who? By the subject. Because every other recognition is object. Sorry, and we are talking like this, and I know that it's probably floating over the heads of some for the moment. It's okay. Every other recognition or knowing is objective, because it's knowing other. Everything is other to to, to the the subject that is perceiving it, while the subject believes itself to be personal. You see? So everything is other. So this is why the subject, which has a taste of personal in it, is not convinced that I am this, because it, something knows I am this, this is everything, which must include the one who wants to confirm it. But the one who needs to confirm it only needs to confirm it because it's carrying the virus of person in it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. But that's not true, because only the thing which says, there's only this, only that can say, there's only this, not the person. Boy. Is it helpful, talking like this? Oh, yes. Thank you. The one who is wanting to know something at the moment, wants to know something because is wearing the costume of the knower, phenomenally, meaning personally. It's very subtle. You don't have to know all these things I'm talking about, okay? There are easier ways to go to it, but you have come to this point, which is a very subtle point, and it's good. This is your journey. Your meaning what? The same consciousness in that go costume of a person, or the co actually the costume is not even a person. Hmm? It is like some sort of uh, mm, indiv individualization of consciousness. It must know that in this instrument. In another instrument, the consciousness will behave differently, and may come to the same conclusion experientially but in a different way. So there's, there's, there's thousands of ways of waking up, but not for each person. I have only got to find the combination of each one. <laughs> and it's right there with you, and it's right there with you as, as, as much as you are able to be honest. And as much as you are able to sort of like be open to listen, your combination numbers are coming up right in front, and say, "Okay, boom." <laughs> 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 
<laughs> then somehow the fake ideas in yourself just fall away. I have not done anything at all. I am just looking, working with you, looking with you. Because where are you trying to get to? To now, to here, to where you really are, that is all. I know this all sounds very uh, mysterious and so on. And in a way it is, in some way. But it is only mysterious to the mind. It is not mysterious to itself. Are we enjoying satsang today? Yes. Okay, let's let's go as far as we can. I was thinking you would give the question: Who is can the perceiver perceive? Because I, of course, listening to your teaching, I was thinking about this. But this one you're saying is better for me. Mm. <laughs> like who? The one who come? Yeah. yeah. I think I'll just um, chew it, or I don't know. So yeah, uh, you, you being what again? Just checking. <coughs> Me being. Um, There's only this. Or? Well, you know, it's also funny because every time I check in, I can't find the person. But that's that's been like this for. And the one who checks in, they can't find the person. Is what? It's only where it's. Uh, it's fine. It's just the, the 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 intellect of the being. You can say that which, which, causes searching and seeking and introspection to happen in you. Your own light, your own in intelligence is doing it. You see. But you are there before your intelligence or you arise together. But you are the one. You are the one who even recognize intelligence. You are the knower who knows knowing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk again. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> you come? Namaste, Guruji. Namaste. I just want to express to you this gratitude that explodes in my heart for you. Because when you enter and I saw you, I just could not believe how much we are blessed to have you here. And uh, to have your guidance and your grace guiding us. So, first, when I felt the love for God, I started to uh, go in church, but you know, being there, I could not. I could not just believe in God. I wanted to feel the presence, so I started to read the Bible, and somehow the Holy Spirit revealed, you know, what I read to understand inside my heart, and uh, from that I felt Jesus so much inside my heart, and. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes I would say I'm wrong in I am born in wrong time because, you know, if I was lucky to be with him before two thousand years ago, it would be so much you know different than just reading. And but his guidance was so alive, you know, inside me. Even sometimes I hear, not maybe verbally, but you know, it just come and it's all alive. And uh, then when I came to meet you, when I saw you on YouTube, I didn't know about gurus, about you know awareness, about anything of that. I was not even searching somehow. But you just came. I don't know how it happened. And uh, when I saw you, it was the video. Everything happens in your head. I remember. And uh, somehow. I said, I stop here, you know, just seeing you, just feeling your presence. I didn't know what you are talking about. 
<laughs> you know, when I went uh, uh, that night in bed, I just was wondering, who is this man, you know, who, who changed so much, you know, just, I don't know what happened. And from that day till now, I could not stop listening to you. And when I was following the India retreat, it was the first retreat I followed online. And uh, you were speaking about self and awareness, but I didn't understand. So I enjoyed just to listen to it. And somehow the prayer came inside my heart and I said, please, Master, please just make it clear this to me so I can, you know, follow you more deeply. And I don't know, someday when the satsang ended, I just uh, was in my room and looked through the window and somehow I just disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the eye was not there. It was just, you know, I was not there at all, like nobody is in this body. And I started laughing and I said, Guji, you sit there two hours and explain for this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you know, somehow, I don't know, after some time, just I logged in so, again into, into the body, so, but that experience happened just show, to show me the, you know, what you're explaining, the invitation and you know, and sometimes I feel so much shame for worrying about so small things in what happened in person, in life, when life is such an abundance, you know, and we are so blessed that, that we have mastered like you to, to point us like divine mirror. And uh, that when I met you, I knew that I'm not born in wrong time, that I'm born in right time. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Guruji. I don't know what else to say. Just so, so much grateful to you. Just you know, very good. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> In the play of life, we are all in the right place, born in the right time. Today I was speaking with some of the teams from team from here, and um, I say I don't know any work that is the wrong work for you, because whatever you are doing. And that is the thing that's going to press the buttons that needs to get pressed. And whatever it is, uh, you, whatever work you're put in, whatever situations you find yourself in, whatever people you meet, they're just the right people God sent yeah? to stir you up a little bit sometime. Yeah? And, and, and to not just to stir, also to, to remind each other of what really is important also. So whatever it is, you know, you find that right there in that place hmm, is the opportunity. The mind will go, No, I'm doing the wrong thing, no, I want to do this, and no, oh, I want to do that, and so on. But actually the one who is really earnest sees in everything, even in painful and untrue things, they find spiritual nourishment and vitamins in them. It was said, no, and I said to you before, the wise man builds a house out of the stones that his enemies throw at him and lives in this house happily. Who is this wise one? It has to be you. We are not uh, to spend our life complaining this thing happened, why this thing happened to me? These things actually are coming for us to reveal your greatness.
that your inmost being remains undisturbed. Our personhood might get very shaken up, but underneath this, you know, much bigger uh, is our conscious being. And our connection together is to experience and to verify this truth in yourself. Not only to believe. Belief is good. Belief is powerful. Trust is powerful. But experience also is very necessary. Because experience, you know, gives you the authority of your own seeing. Only here you can confirm. Not hearsay, but what your heart can confirm. Everything is right, but not in the way your mind perceives it. Sometimes we may have a feeling, you know, how do I know that I'm, you know, doing what I'm doing is right and it's not uh, is not against God's will. Well, actually, nothing can happen beyond the permissive will of the Supreme Self. What I mean is like that. The mind might think, I want to go down to, into the village and go to Casa Nirvana, I want to go and do this, and I want to come back and do that. And it has all worked out. Were you meant to go down there? Yes, you are meant to go down there. But maybe for not just that reason. There is a deeper reason, which is the God reason, uh, that you may encounter somebody which was not in your plan. Something may happen which was not in your projection. Uh, it was totally unpredictable, unexpected. And yet it has much more value than the thing you intend to do. And we must be open inside, available, in your openness, to recognise this. When I said before that God gives to everybody, you know, seeds are planted around everyone. And you must develop the subtlety and the sensitivity to recognise them. They are clues. When you recognise them, actually, they have so much potency. But if we are in our mind and so loyal to our egoic projections and determination, you will miss them. And these are super vitamins for a spiritual evolution. What do I mean by that? You may go somewhere and someone approach you for help or something. But your projection in your mind is that, no, I need to go and meet this person, because we are going to go and do something, and you overlook that. But that is what life put in front of you. You see? But here is the thing now. Sometimes it puts in front of you something that you need to say no to also. And you must exercise the right discernment to know which is, the, which, is which in that moment. How are you going to know? Because there is no manual. Intuition. Where does intuition come from? Intuition is synonymous with your being. It means that the more you are honouring that search for truth, the more your discerning powers become accurate, the more your intuitive perception becomes alive, you are switched on, you are moving in, in synchronicity with the cosmic pulse. Now that in its way is still 
a phenomenal vibration. No? But that has some importance also. In a certain way, the complete realization of the self is the easiest thing. But it doesn't finish there, because with the realization of what is true in us, no? with the realization of what is true, then also sometimes we have to return to your dynamic self to clean it also. Do you understand what I mean by this? There is not a, oh yeah, that doesn't exist so it's a dream. No, no. Uh, what happens that when we were identified with personhood, you could not clean yourself. You could not clean the dynamic play. Only with that realization of the true can you look at this and somehow through grace and through uh, intuition, through your own deep A presence and grace, then these things begin to just, even without doing them, they get undone. Because you don't have the arrogance anymore to just say, to dismiss it, oh, they're not their only dreams. There's a time when you can say things are just, well, that's, that's not true, it's a dream. Even the one to undo them is also a dream. It's, it's very subtle. And this is why they are not so much put down as teachings, not for early seekers. In early seeking, actually, the point, and I say the most important and simple thing, is actually to awaken to the truth. A funny thing to say. But at the same time, the recognition of yourself as pure consciousness, the recognition of this huh, happens, but it takes time for the dynamic aspect to stabilize in that understanding. It's been your experience or not? Hmm. Don't think you're doing this work alone personally. The true aloneness is really impersonal. It's almost like you are not just alone as a person, you are alone as everything. OK, OK. Let that just pass you. I'll see you. Yes, one moment. Yeah. Um, today I was speaking to someone here who is new here, and they just I'd never spoken to them, and they came to me and said, "Who is Krishna?" And I kind of looked around for Krishna, <laughs> but it was not that Krishna they were asking about. And then they started to um, talk a little bit about themselves and about the love that's here. Uh, about what? About the love. That they're feeling here, yes, and it's coming to them. It was very beautiful, and there was a lot of love in this being. But um, she expressed she didn't feel that she could love in this way. So I wondered if you could speak to us a little bit about Krishna mm. and about love. Yes, from the highest point, you know. Krishna, Rama, Christ, Holy Prophet, Muhammad, all the saints and sages hmm, are the same one being. Same like you, also. Like you without you. You understand what I say? This? You without you, you beyond you. Meaning you minus the personal the person's sense can be there, but it must be superficial. The person's sense can be there, but it should not be ruling. You understand? The person's sense can be there. Uh, in a sense, even after awakening, uh, God keeps this sense of person sometimes in us, so that you you uh, you can still function with your family and everything like this. And 
we we can still uh, move in a way also to to express uh, compassion and love and understanding and so on. Some things, subtle things of personal personalized consciousness it, it uses this. You know? But when we speak about this love, love is synonymous with pure presence. Love can be felt from a person also, but it is it is not stable. The love that we feel personally is not stable, and often it's it's selfish. The person's love is often selfish. I love you so long as you love me back, or so long as I get something out of it. And so we don't think like that, but very often at the heart of uh, personal uh, love and desire is uh, some something selfish in that. The one who is free does not love in quite the same way. They love even. Uh, the love is not so personal; it's not limited by that. The love emanates from the unicity of being, from the oneness of the self. They are so. Um, the person limits love. The impersonal radiates love to everything. So this love that uh, people come here also to Mantisahaja, where does this vibration come from also? Where does it come from? Because many people come, they don't know anything. Also, some local people come also. They don't even know what is happening here much. But they come here and they enjoy to be here because of the peace that they find here, because of the the love and the openness that they find also. So what is this Krishna love? We can say Krishna love, Krishna consciousness, Christ consciousness, you know, Rama consciousness, Shiva consciousness, you know. All these different uh, expressions, we are we we differ or we vary in expression, but we are one in essence. That essence is the only constant love that there is. Every other love is a sort of like a version of this. So the love that you may you may come to a place like this and you don't feel love. And that's fine, that's fine. We're not insisting that you feel love. We're not even insisting that you're loving. But the main point is to recognize yourself as conscious presence. How? Because you're able to you're shown here how to observe your mind and your idea of yourself as a person. And the moment you learn to do this, to recognize that your your mind and your sense of person are phenomenal, meaning that they are not real in a sense. They are just strongly your belief and habit. And there's something deeper than that that can observe them. You come into the recognition of what we call conscious presence. When you begin to recognize that there's a place greater than the person. And something feels so natural, so effortless, so simple, so total, so content, so happy, so loving, actually. You see? And you feel, but I'm not doing anything to be like this. I'm not doing love. I'm not doing peace. It's just like it's here. I don't know where it comes from. And that peace does not go. What happens sometimes? The mind comes, eh, and the attention goes to the mind, and the experience feels like the self is gone. But it has not gone. It's right here. Gradually, you come to know that even sometimes, if some uh, some noise can come, but the noise come inside the vastness of your peace, and noise come and go. But the peace remains constant. At some point, you come to see this thing. So the love is not learning how to love. That also has a place in the Christian language. You know, like uh, uh, Christ also spoke about love one another. You see, and uh, to love God, to love each one as you love your own self. This kind of love. It was the love that was an education to people 
to not be selfish like this. But there's a love that comes without trying to cultivate it. It comes only through, it comes mainly through recognizing the truth of who you are. And right there in the recognition of who you are, all this pours out of you. And you know what? You don't even have to keep it up because you're not keeping it going. It is just there. It is like the perfume of the flower and the flower, they're like one. But whether the perfume is there or not, the flower is there. You see? So these are the things that is not easy to explain because people mostly feel that love is something that you do and you, 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 I feel this love and I give this love and I receive this love. But the love actually is the, the basis, actually, the foundation of all things that exist come out of love. One day we are going to know it, that the love is so great that even it permits even the play of hatred, of resistance, all these things it allows, because it is greater than all of these things. So for someone who speaks like this, I would say, don't worry, don't, don't worry. Just continue to just... Uh, you know, when you come to satsang, even if you are new, I say the mind is like a piece of ice put into a bowl of warm water, and there is a melting taking place. We can use poetic language and say the ice is surrendering to the water and all this kind of stuff, but there is just a melting taking place. And this is what happens if anyone comes into this kind of environment. Why this environment? Because here the truth is venerated. God is venerated here. And because of this, this place is a holy place. And by being here, living in this environment, something just gets merged in that. You see? And it will come in different ways. It comes by you sitting in a satsang or just doing your work or something and the interactions you have with other beings who are here and so on. Everything is somehow nurturing, cultivating that that love, which is not different from knowledge, which is not different from awakening, you see. So yes. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. I want to go back to we say here now uh, yes I want to go back to an expression I heard earlier and the expression was there's only this what is this there's only this okay Are there any pictures about this? I'm going to ask every one of you, even those of you who have never been to satsang before. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to say to you, if someone say to you, there's only this. If something happened, I'm sitting in a theatre, and somehow all lights went out. And I don't know, for some reason, something just flashed in the mind and says, there's only this. But this darkness? No. What what is speaking about? There's only this. Like nothing else really exists except this. What is this? Let's accept for a moment, okay, that this statement is true from you even. That there is only this. What did it mean this? There is nothing else. So let's try that for a minute. That everything else is only apparent. It only appears and disappears. Like the things of the mind. 
every day we have some experience in life, no? That uh, we we look into each other's eyes, or we we have a beautiful conversation, we have a moment, and we think, "Wow, this is so special." But it passes, and it becomes yesterday. Can you reach back and take something from yesterday and bring it back into now? No. It's gone. What was the thing? It was a moment of feeling, a thought, remembered. But something is not able to sustain it. The best you can do is with a faculty of something called memory. Memory kind of holds an impression of a moment, but the impression is not the moment. So everything that you perceive, and chiefly we are perceiving what we conceive. You perceive what you can conceive mean what? What you recognize and believe becomes our impression. And something stores these impressions inside. But are they true? Are they alive? And people can spend so much time talking about things which are not here. Just memory. Or future. You know, what you want to do. I want to do this when I'm there, when I'm you know, in another two years I want to be married. And the other day I heard somebody speaking, you know. Like, you know, yes, in about three years I'm going to open up a business and I'm going to go back to my God. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this person? Who has that authority? Who promised you tomorrow? Or even your next breath, even? So, we live so much in the confidence of our projections and the attachments to our past and things like this, you see. And the past and the future is sustaining an idea we have about ourselves, which is not ourself. So when the statement comes, there is just this. It's, it's not snap. The snap uh, somehow is the recognition of it, but it is not a snap. It is not a happening. The happening occurs in the mind. But it itself is not that. It is not even now. What is this? This is that which recognizes life. It is life, and it is also that which recognizes life. It is you. <coughs> Maybe the mind says, whoa, 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 wait a minute now, actually. That can't be me. Why can't it be you? Because the memories that we have of ourselves. The judgments we have about ourselves, the fantasies we have about ourselves, the arrogance we hold and specialness about ourselves cannot admit that it is this. The idea we have about ourselves is waiting to be confirmed. And it can never be confirmed, because the idea you have about yourself is always changing, and something witnesses the changing. That which witnesses the changing, but is detached from the changing, that is the unchanging. And that unchanging one is what we call the God-Self, pure consciousness. Our essential being, our unity with the God Self, not equality with, our harmony with, you can say for now. Later you will not find words to say 
more. You want to say something? Come. Namaste. Um, I just, I just remembered. I love you so much. I just remember once about this, and I don't want to lose the. Come the, the to I don't want to lose the, what you were talking, Baba. You played the game once with us in the in the ruins where we did the satsang. <clears throat> and it was very important for me, I just remember now. And I wanted to share because you were sitting and we were put, we, we just came in front of you and you just said, um, now close your eyes and I'm going to move you. And uh, so you, you moved us like to the left and then you asked, did you move? And we say, no, no, but I just moved you to the left. But did you move? No, I didn't move. So I recognize this, um, you know? The unmoving one. I just don't move. So we were moving front and back. And we noticed the body was moving. Yeah. Even you said, even the planet is moving thousand miles uh, of speed. But are you moving? And we said no. And I just so we can apply that also. Thoughts are moving. Are you moving? You who witness the thoughts, are you moving? Body moving. This is why you hear this paradox here, when people say, you know, I'm going, but I'm not going. You know? I'm doing this thing, but I'm not doing. I'm crying, but I'm not crying. Hmm? I'm laughing, <laughs> but I'm not laughing. What it means? People say, oh, crazy. What are people crazy? I will advise you not to speak like that in public, <laughs> but we understand who experience that something is moving in the presence of that which is not moving. Something is acting in the presence of something that is not acting. Is this not a common perception for you? Sorry? Yes. yes. Which is greater, that which is moving or that which is unmoving? Unmoving. Yes. That which is coming and going or that which is still? It is just still, it is just watching. Yes. Watching arises from it, but it itself is not watching, it has no interest to watch something. But the capacity to perceive. Uh, its dynamic pro projection or manifestation that occurs also in front of it. Are you empty or full or confused? <laughs> Most important thing, pay attention to your being. I started speaking nearly two hours ago, but you have not moved. Maybe understanding has taken place, maybe some doubts have taken place, maybe some openness has taken place, maybe some tensions have taken place, but you have not moved. <coughs> Who are you, the one who has not moved? Mm. 
of what importance is it? If you have strong identification with personhood, and the person also have a strong fascination for life, uh, our um, manifest life, worldly life, eh? then you will not feel capable or confident to recognize your unmovingness, because we are too much invested in the movement. And yet the movements are unreliable. They keep changing, and they'll keep on changing as long as there's someone who is engaged with them. And it's fine. It's fine. There is no push to turn you into something that you're not, or to force you to understand something you're not yet ready to. But this you who may be not ready to do this is also not you. I know these words may feel very strong for you, not for all of you. I told you. When I first uh, met Papaji, in the first few months, I realized I was not learning very much, but I was changing a lot. Meaning what? I also could not quite understand this. You know, I am not this. I am not that. But in spite of that, something was changing inside. The way I felt myself was changing. There was more inner space. But I couldn't say if that is significant as far as the teaching is concerned, but that was powerful here. The reference for myself as a person was thinning away. Is there anything wrong with personhood? Not at all. Not if it's your time to keep living through that mode. But gradually, life brings to us the opportunities that are necessary for us to experience when it's time for you to transcend. Everything is tailor made for each and every one. You are so pointed. An exercise. Close your eyes. Move. Are you moving? You say, No. But what is moving? But something not moving. Something eating. Something not eating. Even just knowing this, you don't have to figure out any great mystery about it. Just that quiet observation already is sending so much influence internally to correct and to harmonize and to unify the fragmentations of the mind. And that has stayed with you. Yeah. In spite of everything else, people learn reading many, many books. But if you only knew whatever is happening, something is not happening. And you really know that. I'm happy for you. If everyone is reading things and watching videos and going on pilgrimage, but you say, I don't know anything, all I know is that. I'm not moving. I might do this, I might do that, I might la, la. something is very still inside. Then I say, Great, great. All the things that move, that come and go, they come and go and are gone. 
in the presence of that which does not move. It does not move, but it is not stuck. It is not stagnant. It is not stale. It gives freshness to freshness. And, and, oh, and sometimes I feel um, this is um, completely confirmed inside. Um, but sometimes I feel I have a lot of anxiety, like the person feels a lot of anxiety in the body and like really a lot. Yeah. And um, and sometimes I can't deal with the anxiety of the body, you know. But but inside I feel good. And sometimes even outside I have to um, respond or answer things or do things and or sometimes I do sometimes I, I don't you know I don't know what to do because inside doesn't come any it doesn't come anything to do sometimes it comes quickly and sometimes like oh, are you going to do this or are you going to do this or like oh, what are you going to do about this and and most of the times I don't know. Sometimes I do. Most of the times I don't know. Still don't know. I keep checking inside just to confirm. Okay, is this what Baba told us? Still, still here? Yes, it's here. And even Manju talks to me about this, and we confirm it. It is here. But still, things are needed to do in the day-to-day day, day day life. Mm. I the, don't have... The I more that you uh, are in conscious connectedness with that which is not moving, then you will find that your intuitive and discerning powers are applying much more accurately. So if there is something to do or not to do, you will be more quick to um, to discern the right thing or not. Sometimes there is nothing to do. Very often, in fact, there is nothing to do about something. It is not that you have to do, or if you don't do something... No, sometimes there is nothing to do. Sometimes it is just something from the mind. And to not go along with it is also an expression of wisdom. It is not that like I am stale, because sometimes yeah. I ask myself, even I ask Manju, is this like stale waters or something? No, it's not stale. Yeah. I, it just doesn't come from inside. Yes. To do this or. Yeah. Or, I like know? it. I like it. Uh, it's very good. Uh, me and you, we like it, but uh, mm. sometimes other people don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's true, Bob. You cannot please everybody. <laughs> you cannot please everybody, no? Sometimes you can't please anybody, <laughs> but there is never a time when you can please everybody. But um, Baba, why is there? Sometimes I feel so much anxiety in the body. You know, still this I don't know. But it, I don't know. I don't know. There are certain know. feelings that you feel in the body, but the mind interpret them as anxiety. You understand? It's not that there are all these different things happening. Uh, well, something happens, a movement happens inside the body, about the mind, and the thing itself is okay. Where the trouble starts mm -hmm. is that there are some interpreting tendencies mm -hmm. and habits, and when they start to interpret, interpret it personally, then the bad smell comes. Yeah. You understand? This is a, something just a movement, you know, and then the mind says, whoa, you know, you're becoming depressed again. Yeah, usually, usually and, you know, it's related yeah. to old stories or yes, yes. patterns or yes, you know, and it like is it. so. It's not the thing. The thing is just a wave, and it's gone. But the interpreting habit says, you know, whoa, 
not again, oh no, not again. And something goes along with that. The next thing you know, you're sort of crying, you know, buckets of tears. And nothing is nothing. There's nothing. All of this is nothing, actually. To be honest with you, it's, it's nothing. Uh, we're making most things up. Um, Baba, can you take me to the subject that um, uh. we did that game when we're not moving and uh, it doesn't feel. It feels completely true, but it's just. When you did that, uh, it's such. It's, it doesn't have any limits, you know. Can you take me there? Well, if it doesn't have any limits, it's still here. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's still it's, it's ever here. Yeah. It's ever here. The thing which keeps saying, you know, can you take me there, is a thought mm -hmm. arising in it. It's true. Then we're good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I feel maybe it's enough for tonight. We can just take a moment. To, to to render not as a mental thing but surrender render Or simply to recognize that effortless emptiness essence. Which nobody is producing. It's just when the mind force is not given so much attention and respect, this that is unmoving and eternally present is recognized. So it didn't come. It's always here. Just now recognized again and again and again. But it is not again and again and again. It's not even Again, nor a loss.
Praise be to the Supreme Self. Praise be to God. Alhamdulillah. Are we going to have some music today? Mm. Understand that my game is precise Pleasure and pain are alike So rejoice even when in despair Look at me while I smile The one who is true won't fear my dark side He'll always prostrate to my unsparing light He will always prostrate to my unsparing life Grow my son And become a man Grow my son And become a man Trust be still I will illumine your way 
Lämna och lät ett anfall Lät ett be My voice cries upon the earth Seeking the one with the urge to surrender his life Whose heart is in love Willing to leave aside any interest That may conflict with mine By thinking of me He forgets his pride He embraces despair And walks towards his destiny with a smile Surrounded by flames He sheds his desires And in ecstasy sing praises to the mother And in ecstasy sing praises to the mother Do you feel this grace that is tirelessly falling upon us? Do you feel this benevolent force that in silence sustains us? Do you feel this warmth that has come undeserved in the night of ignorance? Do you see this light piercing the shadows of arrogance? I am of the nature of my father Standing on my own Nothing to hope for I am of the nature of my father Burnt are my sorrows In flames of devotion I am of the nature of my father my own peace abiding in oneness I am of the nature of the most high strong fearless courageous kind-hearted I am of the nature of my father standing on my own nothing to hope for I am of my father Burnt are my sorrows in flames of devotion I am of the nature of my father Poised in my own peace Abiding in oneness I am of the nature of the most
in <clears throat> few words from the Avadutta Gita. Mm. The sage says, if water and water are mixed together, there is no difference between one and the other. It is the same with matter and spirit. This is very clear to me. If I have never been bound, I can never be liberated. How could you think that the Self, with form or without, could be bound? I know the nature of the One Supreme Being. Like space, it extends everywhere, and all the forms that appear within it are like the illusory water in a desert mirage. You are the One Purity. You have no body. You are not the mind. You are the Supreme Reality. I am the Self, the Supreme Reality. Say this without any hesitancy. Why do you weep, O mind? Why do you cry? Take the attitude, I am the Self. O dear one, go beyond the many. Drink the supreme nectar of unity. You do not possess intelligence, nor do you possess ignorance, nor do you possess a mixture of these two. You are yourself intelligence, an intelligence that never ceases, never strays. <clears throat>